been a little while since I posted any, anything on YouTube, so I figured I'd do a little update on the Supero Tundra. So, um, basically, one of the things that I had to do over the winter is install this radiator. Um, last winter, rather. And uh, I had a friend kind of weld some end plates on here for me, and I just used some rubber bushings and some threaded rod and uh, mounted that up. I ended up cutting more of the uh, radiator support apart, but that's fine. Um, so included with that, I ended up doing some AN fittings as well. Uh, I had a lot of issues with those like leaking. So we did the dash 20 weld on fitting here and shaved the little coolant ports that go to the upper neck and also uh down here you can i don't know if you can see that very well but there's like a 45 degree angle on the bottom and uh i went with this um triple pass radiator so it's a side flow and it's got uh you can actually see the little divots in there that are welded so the water has to pass through the radiator three times before it goes in or out so it doesn't just pass along the top if it's really hot um i redid the wiring harness for this recently i just kind of like laid it here because i haven't run the truck in a while but i put this uh deutsch connector in there 14 gauge wire uh i got my relay and my fuse right here and there's uh getting triggered off the haltech from right there so um that's new. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, I had to replace the headlight ballast because my old overflow, which I still have to do something with this overflow, it's kind of janky, but you can see like the ballast is just kind of chilling there. So um, some coolant spilt on that part and burnt that out. So I ended up getting new bulbs, replacing I got a whole new kit for it, I guess, or just new ballasts. I think the wiring harness was fine. Yeah, but anyway, um, planning on doing something with this harness that's, you know, used to go underneath the radiator support and now it's just kind of dangling on top there. Um, and I just have the horn kind of just plugged in here temporarily, but I think I'm gonna put some more Deutsch connectors on here i think there's like 20 wires so i'll probably use like a 12 pin and an 8 pin and i also noticed that there's some like bigger wires in here so i might keep those out of the deutsch connector and just go with like a like a quick connect fitting or like the a deutsch connector for one thick wire just like a one pin connector um the other thing that i have been messing with is um rebuilt the whole front so it's got um new lower control arm bushings and i descaled and repainted the lower control arms um i descaled the spindles a little bit i didn't do everything but i did you know pretty much everything you can see painted that um it's got uh well i won't go past that but it's got yukon um lower control arm bushings they don't even sell these anymore, unfortunately. Um, and I got new eccentric bolts for the lower control arms, um, new hardware. I got the Bilstein 5100s with the Dobson's um, lift springs. And these aren't the tallest ones. I think these are 295 millimeters and they have a higher spring rate. So this should give me a little uh, stiffer you know ride but at the same time my bilstein is on a lower uh shock level now so um it's not pushing up so much so the lift spring is actually kind of gaining me that height but i think that these are a higher spring rate so that should make the front a little stiffer and kind of help with any body roll uh hopefully so moving on upper control arms new um new hardware for the big long bolt from Toyota, um, you know, new hardware up here, descaled, painted this whole area, um, adjustable SPC. 
So you can adjust right here for camber and this part actually has a square washer in it. So if you unbolt this and loosen it, you can spin this to change the caster. So right now I have it maxed out on camber and caster and I just zeroed out the um, eccentric bolts for the lower control arms and I just set my tie rods back into the same position that they were in when I took it apart. And of course, it's got a new steering rack and also a new little universal joint there. You may or may not be able to see that. Um, and I just looped the lines for the rack right now. Uh, I'm going to put in a uh, Toyota MRS electric pump, which I have sitting right here on the shelf. So that is going in next after the alignment. I'm probably just gonna drive it with a depowered rack for like, you know, basically just to the shop to get it aligned and back. Um, yeah, I guess the only thing I didn't mention is the aftermarket sway bar. I can't remember what brand that sway bar is, but that's a heavy duty sway bar. It came with new um, like two hole clamp style mounts and it came with the new black poly bushings uh, and the end links. So those are suspension max uh, end links. And th there was two sets. There was a set that was longer, but these fit perfectly and have like a decent amount of tension on there. So I think that the shorter ones are gonna work. I don't know, I got the long ones on the shelf, so I can experiment, I guess, with changing these end links to see if that makes any difference. Um, future plans, we're gonna reroute the dump pipe back into the down pipe and I have all the pipe and fittings and V-band and the bellows and everything to make that go into there. Um, I got to finish wiring the line locker. Um, I have my ABS harness here. I already have some wires basically separated for a front wheel speed sensor. I'm going to do front left or, uh, excuse me, front passenger wheel speed. And also I have a bundle of wires right here that comes from the speed sensor and the transmission. So I need to get that pinned into the Haltech. Um, I'm going to command the electric power steering from another new device that I purchased recently, which I have tested out and works awesome. Um, this Haltech keypad, that thing's sweet. So I got anti-lag on there and I was going to do my line locker here. Uh, I did launch and I think that I'm going to install a clutch slipper valve into this. So that will be to activate the solenoid for the clutch slipper valve, solenoid for brake booster. I mean, a uh, line locker again, you know, just some sweet little buttons. So this is four wires going to this where traditionally for a switch, you have to run two wires for each switch. So that would be, um, what, 16 wires that you'd have to run. So that cuts down on that wiring. And basically I can do outputs off of the ECU to uh, power up some relays. Uh, I'm probably not gonna go for the power distribution module. It's a little too much money right now. And I already have all the relays and stuff set up for everything else. So I think I'm just gonna go with relays for now. Maybe eventually get the PDM, not sure. Uh, not really a lot happening with the Supra, so uh, transmission's still out of it, and probably once I get the truck straightened out, uh, probably at least try to get the clutch fixed in the Supra so I can just get it out of the shop and uh, on the road, and I'm not sure what's going to happen with that. I'd love to, you know, fix it all up, but we'll see. One thing that I didn't mention is, um, you know, to do this touchpad, I ended up having to do, I don't know, I, I had to do a little bit of wiring. It wasn't a big deal, um, but I ran out of can spots. So I was thinking about splicing together 
the can wires to just make all the devices work because I have uh, the wideband kit back there. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, wideband kit, then the dash and the touchpad. So um, I kind of ran out of slots. So long story short, I ended up getting the can hub got that mounted in there there's the perfect little spot for it and that was pretty convenient um and i spent a little bit of time basically cleaning up the wiring back here it's kind of still a mess i'm once it's fully completed i'm gonna try to zip tie all the wires together and kind of make sure everything looks a little nicer but i ended up putting these deutsch connectors back here because i had like a big spool of wire so i ended up eliminating all the wires that I'm not using. So I have all my spare circuits right here into this plug and basically out of this side are the wires that I need to be using. And it's similar deal here. Like those are all just spares. So all I have to do is put the other side of that connector on and I can wire my outputs or my inputs in there. So that's kind of nice, but that uh, is basically it. So uh, if you like videos like this, subscribe and Thanks for watching.